talking about my third favorite book, children's book, and that's um, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, right? So it's by Mildred Taylor, and she's from Jackson, Mississippi. I read it at CMZ. And uh, it's a coming-of-age story about black family, black love, black solidarity, or solidarity in general. Uh, yeah, and it's in, set in the 1930s, right? So in the very beginning... Oh, shit. In the very beginning, we have Cassie, which is the main protagonist. She's a nine-year-old black girl. And then we've got her brothers, Stacy, Christopher John, and Clayton Chester, a.k.a. Little Man, walking to school in rural Mississippi. And this first scene, it just brings you right in. And I'm going to read it to you verbatim, okay? And um, they're walking to school in rural Mississippi. Little Man's a proud... Uh, young man, he's proud of his brand new school clothes, proud of himself, that's what he was taught, you know, and um, they also lived on land that had been sold during Reconstruction, so they were actually sort of better than a lot of, not better, but they were better off than a lot of the sharecroppers who was living on other people's land and having to survive, but they was actually able to get their own piece of land, and that's revolutionary, right, when you can get the land. So after several miles of walking, then T.J. Avery and his brother Claude eventually join in with the four Logans on their walk to, walk to school. So page one, chapter one. Little man, would you come on? You keep it up and you're going to make us late. My youngest brother paid no attention to me, grasping more firmly his newspaper wrapped notebook and his tin can lunch of cornbread and oil sausages. He continued to concentrate on the dusty road. He lagged several feet behind my other brothers, Stacy and Christopher John, and me attempting to keep the rusty Mississippi dust from swelling with each step and drifting back upon his atten uh, his. Uh, and drifting back upon his shiny black shoes and the cuffs of his corduroy pants by lifting each foot high before setting it gently down. So he's always, he wanted to keep his clothes real neat, always meticulously neat. Six year old little man never allowed dirt or tears or stains to mar anything he owned. And today was no exception. I remember this from my cousin Patrick. I remember Patrick would tuck in his shirt and was always like real proper and real neat. And he's probably one of the, um, most uh, uh, interesting cousins that I have um, that, I, that I respect. So you keep it up and you make us late for school. Mama's going to wear you out. This is Cassie threatening to little man, which is incredible, actually. This talks about child abuse, right? Uh, this is nine-year-old Cassie telling her little brother, you better hurry up or Mama's going to wear you out. You better hurry up or I'm going to you know, tell on you and you're going to get smacked by the mother. This is incredible because... Uh, how can, you know, uh, black folks, not really, I'm against all child abuse, but I, um, I, I have seen a lot of really crazy shit, or heard a lot of crazy shit from black families uh, today, where they would, they would beat the shit out of their kids and just talk to their kids like they're shit. Steve Harvey's a good ass fucking thing. He makes so many fucking jokes about like kicking the kids and beating them up and it's so fucking hilarious and shit. It's not funny, Steve. And then your fucking wrinkle on your fucking, um, you know, on your forehead. It's, it's a weird look, dude. And, uh, yeah, I don't, Steve Harvey's kind of a dick. But uh, I'm not talking about Steve Harvey being a dick. I'm talking about the, the uh, hierarchy and the oppression and how white people kept black people down through violence and whipping them, right? And that's exactly what black mothers are doing to their kids. They're holding them down and, you know, whipping them. So that, that oppression and that sort of violence against them, I don't like. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a different time because you got white society who's coming after them. So you want to, you know, make sure they're doing exactly as you want them to do. So that way they can't, like, veer off. But if they can't grow and they can't discover who they actually are, then, you know, I don't. I don't like that. So, you know, hitting a child seems okay for the black adults, but that's exactly how white masses kept the black folks down, was through violence. Malcolm X Debate Club, the uh, black women there could learn to, to not hit their kids also. So we were nearing the second crossroads where deep gullies lined both sides of the road, and the dense forest crept to the very edges of the high, jagged, clay-walled bank. Suddenly, Stacy turned. Quick, he cried, off the road. Without another word, all of us but Little Man scrambled up the steep right bank into the forest. Get up here, man, Stacy ordered, but Little Man only gazed at the ragged red bank sparsely covered with scraggly brown briars and kept on walking. Come on, do as I say. But I'll get my clothes dirty, protested Little Man. You're going to get them a whole lot dirtier if you stay down there. Look! Little Man turned around and he watched 
uh, with saucer eyes as a bus bore down on him spewing clouds of red dust like a yellow dragon breathing fire. Little man headed towards the bank, but it was too steep. He ran frantically along the road looking for a foothold and finding one, hopped onto the bank, but not before the bus had sped past enveloping him in a scarlet haze while laughing white faces pressed up against the bus windows. Little man shook a threatening fist in the thick air and then looked dismally down at himself. Well, old little man done got his Sunday clothes dirty, TJ laughed as we jumped down from the bank. Angry tears welled in little man's eyes, but he quickly brushed them away before TJ could see them. Shut up, TJ, said Stacy. Yeah, shut up, TJ, I echoed. Come on, man, Stacy said. Next time, do as I tell you. Little man hopped down from the bank. How comes they did that, Stacy, huh? He asked, dusting himself. How comes they didn't even stop for us? Because they like to see us run it. It ain't our bus, Stacy said, balling his fist and jamming them tightly into his pockets. Where's our bus? demanded little man. Well, we ain't got one. Well, why not? So nobody told little man what, you know, what the deal is, right, in, in uh, the dirty south. Then a white boy named Jeremy joins the Logan gang on their way to school. He's a minor character, but it's interesting because it shows that there's some decent white folks out there. Um, it said that Jeremy has been beat up, actually, just for associating with the Logans. His eldest sister, Lillian Jean, thought that it was hilarious that he got beat up for hanging out with the black folks. So, you got Jeremy hanging out with the black folks, and then he'd come home with all these welts on his arm, and his oldest sister, a white woman, right, like Julie Chancellor, who doesn't give a shit, and actually it would be white women that would lie and get black men lynched, and it would be the racist men who pretends to be, you know, defending the white women, but I bet the white woman just loves, right, um, you getting her man to fuck somebody up in her honor. Yes, yes, defend me and defend my honor and lynch this poor black, you know, um, this poor black man who I had actually loved. Uh, one third of the lynchings were for accused rape, but four fifths of those one third were consensual relationships. So the white woman was actually raping the shit out of the black man in the back. And um, and what are you doing that? You know, she could have lied if he rebuked her um, advances. So what could a slave have done? She's the one that had all the power. It's not just sexual harassment. I mean, it's flat out rape. And uh, if he says no, she could have lied about it, got him lynched. If he says yes and they get caught and then, you know, her racist daddy comes and uh, sees what's happening or the community or whoever is putting all this racism on her, uh, then she's like, no, nah, daddy, you know, he raped me. Uh, I swear, I swear I didn't, I didn't, you know, I swear it wasn't me. And then that poor black man would get lynched, right? So anyways, you got a white boy named Jeremy joins the Logan gang on their way to school. He's a minor character, but it said that Jeremy has been beat up for associating with the Logans and Lillian Jean, a white girl, she thought it was hilarious. White kids went to the Jefferson Davis High School. And Jefferson Davis um, which most people know is the leader of the Confederacy of the South, right? So in Kentucky, Jefferson Davis was actually born right here in the, in Kentucky in the bluegrass, uh, about just you know a hundred miles or so from um, uh, where Lincoln was born. So he had Abraham Lincoln and you had Jefferson Davis that was born here in Kentucky. That's why they say it was brother versus brother, but it actually wasn't that equal because a hundred thousand. Kentuckians fought for the North, and 40,000 Kentuckians fought for the Confederacy. So, the vast majority fought for the North. Overwhelming majority, but Karen Dunnigan didn't know that. She wants to pretend that most of them went Confederate. But, you know, she's a white woman, too. That's what they do, right? They take their white womanhood, and then they um, abuse the shit out of it. They're, you know, they're put on a pedestal, and everybody's just supposed to worship them and bow down to them no matter what they say or do, and they can get away with any type of crime they want to. Right. So, uh, Jefferson Davis High School is named for the leader of the Confederacy, the South, Mississippi, the absolutely shittiest state in America, hands down, bar none, the shittiest state. This is where Mildred Taylor's from. They still retain their 1894 Confederate flag as their state's flag today in 2014. So all 50 states, even Georgia, maybe 10 years ago, got rid of their, their Confederate flag. But Mississippi still today today has a confederate flag as their state flag what a bunch of fucking racist fucking pieces of shit seriously mississippi is like the dumbest state most violence fucking they're behind on every goddamn fucking indicator out there and being from kentucky i used to make fun of what you know west virginia thank god for west virginia because on the terms of rankings kentucky was always on the bottom and i was like you pointing at west virginia because 
They always felt like they were lower. But actually, thank God for Mississippi. Because Mississippi, you are just a backwards fucking toilet bowl of a state. You're just fucking just complete shit. You're just fucking garbage, okay? You got a fucking Confederate flag. Confederate flag is your state flag. Get with the fucking times, 2014. If you don't accept black people, I guarantee you there's homophobia there too. Um, so... Uh, now I will say one thing, there was a 2001 referendum that was attempted to change the flag, but it was defeated at the ballot box, and the new flag wasn't that uh, snazzy, but just the idea of getting rid of that shitty fucking um, Confederate flag is, is so important, they need to just burn it and get rid of it. Uh, and But I bet you this is just like in uh, Mississippi today, uh, in the book at Jefferson Davis High School, the Confederate flag was actually raised higher than the American flag, right? So you had the Confederate flag, and then you had the American flag underneath, which sort of says the South would rise again and fuck America, because, you know, the Southern rebelling states would have been the terrorists, right? They would have been the ones, the treasonous fucking people against America, using violence against the United States of America, right? So, they were Benedict Arnold's, right? Only way worse. They were more like, I mean, I don't know. They, they, they were, they were like the white people versus, uh, the Native Americans. But the, um, all right, carrying on. So, they mentioned that the, there's a Barry burning that was mentioned in the very first chapter. John Henry Barry and his two nephews were attacked and John Henry Barry was burnt up and he would later on die because of his burn. So, it, it shows a lynching and it shows that, you know, white people would take the, law into their own hands without a court and just fuck somebody up just for because you know they're black or some um, alleged fucking crime which probably wasn't true basically it was using violence to keep you know black people in their so called place um, to maintain the racial white totalitarian dictatorship that white people had they wanted to keep black folks in their place. Then there's, uh, I'm going to do a video after this about the most ridiculous lynchings. Uh, I heard one was about the guy was throwing rocks. He just threw a couple rocks and then he was getting lynched. Um, sometimes black folks would get lynched for general pr principles. Oh, why would you kill him? Oh, general principles. No, he's got to fucking do something. General principles, that's your fucking racist prick. And you murdered him just to keep him down. Also, lynching back in the south was the entire white people. All of them was in on it. They were in these pictures pictures and they would smile and they didn't give a shit about covering their faces because they knew that they wouldn't get in trouble for the bullshit that they did. The reason why John Henry Berry was murdered, and this is going to show you know more about what I was saying with the protection of white womanhood, because even the Ku Klux Klan defended white womanhood, so the worst domestic terrorist organization in America defended white women. When have white women really been, you know, um, ever had to deal with struggle? Now, I'm not going to say that they haven't had their share of struggles, because everybody does, but it does seem like they're, I don't know. They had to do with uh, domestic violence and rape, but there was a, you know, they would get a house, right? So, uh, the reason why John Henry Berry was murdered Today, today they you know they get better jobs. They got better. Um, they are they're graduating more in college. I think a lot of men are being left behind, and since men aren't even allowed to express any type of emotion, they're supposed to be all strong and all knowing. And there's just all these incredible, impossible pressures that's put on men. No, they are going to be they are going to be left behind. So far behind, it's not even funny, right? Women can be gay, right? They can act gay. They can love each other and hug on each other, and they can say, "Oh, that's cute and that's so adorable." But a man could just, if he wears, a, you know, he just holds an umbrella, it's like, what a faggot, you're so queer, because why, I don't want to get wet by all this? So, yeah, the, today, uh, no, white women are clearly more advantaged. Uh, they want to say, I heard that they pay get paid a dollar more for jobs. I've never heard of really any, I'm not, it, it might still happen. Um, they didn't pass the Lily Ledbetter Act, uh, Mitch McConnell didn't. Clearly I'm for equality, but I hope to get equality, okay? Every heterosexual relationship that I've ever been in and seen or witnessed, if you're the man, you lose, and it's just, it's endearing, right? The man loves her and she can barely give a shit about him. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that's so endearing. Oh. And we're going to learn about that, actually, with the Little Prince. And I I don't hate that, actually. I don't hate that. I just feel like i got to up my game even more. But I do wish that women, you know, you can't hit a woman ever. But why, why are you allowed to hit anybody? Why is anybody allowed to be hit? 
They should extend that privilege to everybody. But they're the ones who lie and get their men to kill, you know, innocent black men for no apparent reason. Just like this man, John Henry Berry, who was murdered and his nephews were also attacked uh, because a white woman had alleged that John Henry Berry had flirted with her. So, whether that's true or not, she said it that it happened and that's enough for violence to happen to poor John Henry Berry.